El Paso, yeah. I did a seminar, then all of a sudden this guy came up yeah. out of nowhere and says, here's a gift from Dalai Lama and gave uh, me this really? Let me get this picture. Here we go. Stand by. All right. Three, two, one, and yes. Well, you've done it again. This is a great movie, and it's going to make so much money that I don't know what you're going to do with all of it. You can buy some more cigars or something. That's right, yeah. It really is a lot of fun. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the movie because uh, the idea of it is to make movies that everyone enjoys, you know, and, uh, and uh, it's very hard when you look at scripts to figure out what is it, you know, mm -hmm. that will make people come to the theaters. And uh, somehow I was really fortunate the last four or five movies that I hit it right and that all those movies made a lot of money. And I think that with Running Man, we have a real winner in our hands because it has all the elements in there. And what is very surprising in this film is that the female audience also enjoys it so much, which usually they don't go for the action movies as much. But this one has so many other elements in it and the humor and so on that I think that it really will broaden up the whole thing and the amount of uh, people that I would get. Richard Dawson uh, has a really big part. He obviously knows how to play a game show host, so that wasn't too, too tough. But he is, uh, he's great in this film. Well, actually, you know, it was a very tough acting job for him, although he plays a, a character that he has played in reality on television, but to play this kind of a evil uh, host, uh, game show host, uh, and to, to deliver his lines the way he did, and to play to the audience the way he did. And so he worked very hard uh, to prepare himself, and he was very good. And you never knew what to expect next, because every take that he did was different. So it was a quite an uh, experience to watch uh, Richard Tarzan work in this film. You know, it seems longer than this, but it's really hadn't even been 10 years. I first saw you in Birmingham when I was a young reporter, younger reporter there with the Sally Field movie. How much have you changed since then? You're obviously 10 years older, but how has Arnold Schwarzenegger changed? Well, I uh, didn't change much, I think, in the last 30 years. I mean, the only thing is that I get more experienced uh, with the various different things I do and uh, more educated and uh, more worldly as you travel around and so on. But uh, basically, I, I'm still the same. I have a great time what I'm doing. I love my work. I have a, you know, a good sense of humor about my work and all those things, but I'm still very intense and very hungry uh, for more and for better and all those things. So that all stayed the same. And I'm still out there, uh, as I was in my bodybuilding days, to entertain people. I enjoy entertaining people. And in my bodybuilding days, I just did not stand on stage and flex mm -hmm. like everyone else, but I really created a show to make people laugh and make them have a good time and bring another dimension to mm -hmm. the sport. And the same is in acting. I, didn't, I don't want to just do a straight action film. I want to do something that really makes them also laugh and makes them frightened in a movie and makes them sad and makes them happy. You're also a closet comedian, I think. Oh, so yeah, no. I think you'd like to do stand-up if you could sometime. Oh, uh, of course. I, I mean, listen, when I do seminars or when I see a show or something like this, uh, there's a lot of comedy in there. And I would do uh, one time a straight uh, comedy because I, I, I love comedy. And dry humor, yeah. dry wit. You look great with a cigar, by the way. I mean, there's not one right here right now, but, I mean, you're... Oh, there is one. Let's... You look starring the cigar. I mean, you look great with a cigar. I just want to tell you, I've not noticed that so much till this movie. And you've done it. You had it. It's a good prop. George Burns loved it, and it did great for his career. So who knows what it'll do for you? Uh, Terminator is. They're going to be another one of those. You, we talked last time. I thought it was going to be sooner than later, but is that still happening? We will do another Terminator because there's a tremendous. Uh, uh, want out mm -hmm. there amongst the audience. I mean, we get a lot of letters continuously and a lot of people ask me all the time, when do we see another Terminator? So I think because of that, uh, we are putting together now a second Terminator, a sequel to that, and uh, which should be uh, as good, if not better, than the first one. But they usually I stay away from sequels because I don't want to really be known for ma so building and making my career uh, with sequels, just to, uh, to play it safe mm -hmm. and to go out and play to the same audience and so on. I like to take original ideas because there are some good original scripts out there. And uh, like, for instance, Running Man, I had the choice to do a, a sequel movie instead of that. And I was very, very lucky that I chose the Running Man because that to me was a great script, a great concept, and it really would move me a step further in my career. I found something out about you today I didn't know. You used to be a tank driver? Yeah, that's right. When I was in the Austrian army, I was a tank driver. You fell and, asleep? Uh, no, I didn't fall asleep. I thought you asleep. fell asleep and a tank got away or something is what I'd heard. Uh, no, no, I, I had many accidents with tanks. You know, I, we were sleeping underneath the tank, which you always do when you at night. You dig a hole, you drive your tank over, and that's where you sleep. But when you forget to put the brakes on, in the morning when you wake up, your tank is gone. And so those are the kind of things that happen to me quite frequently. And, 
uh, they were not very pleased about that. What's a big misconception about you? I think a lot of people don't realize how smart you are. They don't know that you have you know, a business and economics degree from the University of Wisconsin. Is there anything you, you really think that people don't understand about you now? You've been around long enough to change a lot of that. They just think you're just kind of a big guy, you know, who, you know, is a foreigner and who's now an American who makes a lot of money. But what don't they understand about you that you'd like for them to say? Well, you know, I think that the press in the United States has really portrayed me in, 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 a, in a good way and in a proper way. I've never really read uh, too many things that were totally off or something like that. We're scared sometimes of you, Arnold. That's the only reason. We don't want you coming to our house. That's the biggest thing. <laughs> I mean, some no, but, guy would be something but, else, but Arnold, we're feared of you. We but uh, I, I really I was always treated the proper way, and I think that people know, uh, you know how I am, because although on, on, in a movie you see me sometimes very intense and very violent and all this, but when I do interviews like this, mm -hmm. that's how really how people get to know you. And uh, when I'm on a Carson show or on a Murph Griffin show or any of those talk shows, that's when people get to know you. And that's why I do those shows, because they, I want them to know the real me and also then the character that I play. So I have no problems. I'm not worried about them thinking mm -hmm. I'm dumb, because I don't think they do. I don't think they, uh, they have any misconceptions about me. And you know? so I, I feel fine with the image I have. Well, I'm glad, Arnold, you certainly are a confident person. And I'll never understand why, because no one else could wear a shirt like that and get away with it. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you. Love your shirt. Thank you. <laughs>